Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name. Thank you for what you've done, what you're doing, what you'll yet do. Thank you for every worker, every leader, every minister. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us healthy and strong and alive so that we can continue to pursue the goal you have given and also to keep on serving you. We're asking, oh Lord, that tonight open our spiritual eyes that will behold, that will understand, and that will have more strength and power to keep on serving you in Jesus' name. Open the pages of the scriptures to us and apply it to every life, every heart, every family, every individual, so that, Lord, we'll be stronger in the Lord in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. We're talking today on trusting God and triumphing in the times of trouble. In times of trouble, trusting God. Whatever be tides, trusting God. Whatever happens, trusting God and triumphing in times of trouble. We're looking at Psalm 42 and we come to verse 1. Psalm 42 verse 1, as the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. Look at verse 5. In verse 5 it says, why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. And then in verse 10, it tells us, as with a sword in my bones, my enemies reproach me while they say daily unto me, where is thy God? And then in verse 11, it says, why art thou cast down, O my soul? His soul was cast down. It was having what we call a sinking feeling because he considered everything around and the circumstances and the situations. All he could think of is, my enemies are greater than I am. And my opposers are more powerful than I am. And the situation is overwhelming for me. And then he said his soul could not bear. And so he asked the question, asking himself, Why hast thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. Hope thou in God. In any situation, in every circumstance, you have no receipt to be hopeless. Hope thou in God. In any situation, any circumstance, you don't have any reason to be downcast and to be depressed and to be in despair. Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him. I shall yet praise him. Understand, please? This is old covenant. And then we have the new covenant. In the old covenant, he said, I shall yet praise him when I'm delivered, when I'm lifted up, when I'm supported, and when I become stronger. At that time, after my deliverance, I shall yet praise him. Come to the new covenant, and Paul and Silas were thrown in jail. They had been beaten. Their backs were bleeding. Their legs were in the stalks. And then in the midnight, the chains were still there. The stalks were still there. The situation was still very bad. And it was midnight. It was the night of suffering. And it was the night of adversity. And the night of persecution and pressure. And yet, at that time, they didn't say, I shall yet in the future presume. And Silas and Paul and Silas began to sing. And then they prayed and sang praises unto God. And then heaven responded. And the prison doors were shaking and open. And all the foundations of the prison, they were completely blown off. And all their bands were loose. And shall yet presume. 
Old Testament. But while you are going through the challenges, while you are going through the pressure and the persecution and the opposition, like Paul and Silas, you praise him. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, when you pray, whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe that you have received at that time you are praying you know you have received new covenant and then it says you will have what you say but now it says i shall yet presume who is the health of my countenance and my god let's look at john chapter 14 i'm reading from verse 1 john chapter 14 verse 1 it tells us it says let not your heart be troubled. Here is Christ now saying, I paid the whole price, and I bring you out of your dungeon, and I've redeemed you. He was going to the cross, and he says, Let not your heart be troubled. You see, that language, you know, he said, Let not your heart be troubled. It's like he takes you apart. And it makes you to have authority, dominion over your heart. And when your heart is troubled, it says, you have the power. And you have the authority to silence the trouble in that heart. And say, heart, remember Calvary. Remember redemption. Remember what Christ has done. Be quiet don't be troubled don't go into depression and don't go into regret and say crying what shall i do let not your heart be troubled you believe in god believe also in me and then in verse 27 it says in verse 27 peace i live with you peace I live with you. My peace, my, my peace, I give unto you. Not as the world giveth. When you put all the comfort of the world, all the consolation of the world together, they cannot be equal to the peace that Christ has given. And so it says, not as the world giveth, give I unto you let not your heart be troubled again don't allow that don't permit that don't say because the psalmist said i'm weighed down i'm overwhelmed why art thou cast down and then you join the queue and then you also begin to you know complain why are not cast down i'm overwhelmed and you go back to the old covenant it says no let not your heart be troubled neither let each be afraid neither per don't permit your heart to be afraid don't allow your heart to be afraid whatever happens whatever is happening be on top of the situation and do not permit your life your heart your soul to be afraid as we're trusting god tonight all our problems are washed away triumph i said triumph triumphing in times of trouble we're looking at three things here number one unfolding descriptions of times of trouble number two unnecessary depression in times of trouble number three unstoppable declarations on the time of trouble let's look at number one number one unfolding descriptions of times of trouble in some 37 verse 39 but the salvation of the righteous is of the lord he is their strength in time of trouble he the almighty he the creator he the supporter he the sustainer is their strength in time of trouble look at verse 40 in verse 40 it tells us and the lord shall help them the lord will help me i said the lord will help me and deliver them he shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him they trust 
in him. We're looking at three things here. Number one, discovering self in post times of trouble. It, discovering self in post times of trouble. Number two, discerning simply induced times of trouble. And number three, defending the soul against trauma in trouble. Let's look at number one. Number one, discovering self in post times of trouble. Job chapter 3 verse 25. In Job chapter 3 verse 25 it says, For the things which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. Here is self imposed time of trouble. Job was rich and Job was peaceful and Job, everything went on with Job but then he began to think, he began to imagine what if, what if, what if these children I have while they are celebrating, what if they are blaspheming God and then something bad will happen. What if, what if something happens to me and my wife, you will even say, why don't you die? What if, what if something happens to me and then even my friends will turn against me? He said, the thing which I greatly fear is come upon me. If somebody is living under fear, this may happen. This might happen. Something may double cross my way. I may get into trouble. Be careful because there is a self imposed kind of time of trouble. It says, For the things which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. Look at verse 26. It says in verse 26, I was not in safety. Ah, uh, ah, uh, Job, you were. Because even the devil said, God had made an edge around him, around Job. And that was the reason why Job was serving the Lord. Job underestimated the edge, the protection, the security around him. He was imagining that something bad will happen. I was not in safety, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. He said, I was praying, I was fasting, I was telling the Lord, this must not happen, that must not happen. We're living in a bad world. We're living in a Satan-infested infected world, and so this may happen. Oh, Lord, help me. And because he thought so much about evil. He thought about so much about things that should not happen. Those things eventually happened, yet trouble came. It will not happen to you like that. Look at Proverbs chapter 11. We're reading from verse 17. The merciful man doeth good to his own soul, but he that is cruel troubleth his own flesh. A cruel person imposes upon himself evil, depression, and destruction because what he sows he will reap in verse 19 verse 19 says as righteousness tendeth to life so he that pursues evil pursues each to his own death he imposes that on himself self imposed times of trouble in second chronicles chapter 16 reading from verse 9 it says for the eyes of the lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards them herein thou hast done foolishly Therefore, from henceforth, thou shalt have wars, trouble, warfare, evil. From now on, thou shalt have wars. He imposed that 
on himself if he had been living right, righteous, perfect, holy, and going in the way of the Lord and not allowing foolishness of evil and sinfulness to come into his life, all that would not have happened. Let's see that in our lives. We're not walking in paths, in ways, in actions that bring unnecessary trouble upon ourselves. Number two, we're looking at discerning sinfully induced times of trouble. Sinfully induced times of trouble. Let's look at Genesis chapter 34. And we're reading from verse 30 here. And Jacob said to Simon and Levi, those were two of his children, ye have troubled me to make me stink among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites, and I being few in number, they shall gather themselves together against me and slay me and I shall be destroyed and mine house. What had happened here is Simon and Levi went to the uh, head of Shechem and destroyed that family, the man, the king, and the son. Because the son had defiled Dinah, their, their sister. And then they told them, if you are going to marry our sister, all of you must be circumcised. And they accepted. And when they were weak and having pain because of the circumcision, the two of them went in there and killed all those people. And so Jacob said, what have you done? Why are you like this? Why is it you are bringing time of trouble upon me if we had lived our lives normally and quietly and if Dinah herself had not been roaming about and visiting this and visiting that that would not have happened we can save ourselves from times of trouble instead of just you know doing this and doing that acting here and acting there and then times of trouble come look at chapter 37 verse 32 chapter 37 and in verse 32 and they sent the coat of many colors and they brought each to their father and said this have we found no now whether it be thy son's coat or not you know the story joseph was a beloved favorite son of the father all the other children became envious and jealous and cruel and they were planning they'll get rid of him and eventually jacob sent joseph to go and see his brothers as he was coming he said here comes the dreamer we will slay him and see what will become of his dream but joseph was innocent and joseph was pleasant joseph was righteous and he came to them they grabbed him they removed his coach and he put him in the pit and uh, eventually they, they sold him to the Amalekites who sold him to an Egyptian to Potiphar. Then they dipped that coat in the blood of an animal they had killed. And it says now they took the coat. Yeah, you know, all that was a lie. All that was deception. All that was sin. And they made Jacob to believe that Joseph had died. And because he believed a lie, he believed their deception. Once again, Old Testament. The man was a great man, but he did not have the gifts of the Spirit. He did not have the word of knowledge. He did not have the word of wisdom. He did not have the discerning of Spirit. He believes them. When you don't have the gifts of the Spirit, you will believe a lie and then you'll make yourself sorrowful. You'll be depressed. You'll be downcast because you really don't know the history and the story behind the action that the people are acting out. And so they said, this we found. 
That's a lie. They didn't find the age. They removed the age from Joseph. They dipped it in blood. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. Look at the next verse there. Verse 33. It says in verse 33, And he knew it, that is, he knew the coat. And he said, It is my son's coat. An evil beast has devoured him. Hold on. We know the story. He came to the conclusion. You see, the deceivers, liars, and wicked people, they may not tell you directly that we hated Joseph because of that we sold him. They won't tell you the truth like that. They will show you something and allow you to make your conclusion. And your conclusion is what will depress you. Your conclusion is what will make you downcast. He himself now made the conclusion. He knew it and he said, it is my son's coat. And evil bees have devoured him. Joseph is without doubt. We say without any shadow of doubt. Joseph is rich in pieces. Then in verse 34, here comes the depression now on Jacob rent his clothes on the basis of a lie, on the basis of deception, on the basis of the children not telling him the truth, on the basis of hidden hatred. They lied, they told him, and showed him in action. Now depressed him, and Jacob rent his clothes and put sad clothes upon his loins and mourned for his son many days. Verse 35, in verse 35, and all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him. Now, that comfort does not work when the deceivers who sold Joseph to the land of Egypt, who came with a blood-drenched coat of many colors to their father, who deceived him, made him uh, depressed and make him sink low into unnecessary sorrow of heart. Those same people now, now, there is what we call lie detector in the government, in the world, in science. And Jacob did not have the lie detector. They just came these liars, these deceivers, and they were comforting him. Real comfort, real comfort. But he did not work. If the persecutors and the hidden oppressors, if they come pretending they are comforting him, he doesn't solve the problem. And if the person they are comforting, the believer of today, cannot see through the simply induced time of trouble he'll just be crying and crying and crying he will not know why their comfort is not reaching him at the very depth of his soul but all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him but he refused to be comforted and he said for i will go down into the grave unto my son money we call that deep, deep depression. He was looking for death. He was just desiring that he will die. He said, there is nothing to live for anymore because of that depression. Whenever you are, you know, I shouldn't say you are depressed because we're now in the New Testament. We have Christ living on the inside of us. We have the Father living with us. It says, I'll dwell with them and be with them. They'll be my sons and daughters. I will be their God. And we have the Holy Ghost dwelling inside us. Not only that the Holy Ghost will be with us, but the Holy Ghost will be within us. 
and he will teach us all things and guide us into all truth and all the things that are hidden by those deceptive persecutors they be revealed unto us if we are in line with the supply of the Holy Ghost and even before those comforters come we could comfort them we could talk to them we could tell them no, no problem at all we know what is happening and we're on top of the situation you'll be on top of the situation in Jesus name now but he said I will go down into the grave unto my son he was thinking that the son was in the grave your son is not in the grave your wife is not in the grave and your husband is not in the grave and your minister your pastor is not in the grave we're still alive and we remain alive in Jesus' name. Thus his father wept for him. Meanwhile, Joseph was in Egypt, was in the Potiphar's house, and God was prospering him in everything he did. He was happy. He knew this is the way to the peak of the mountain that God had called me. God was orchestrating things that all things will work together for good for those who are the called of God and for those who love him and God was working that out with Joseph meanwhile on this other side the father was weeping and mourning for him in sorrow of heart and maybe he was praying oh God where are you and my enemies are asking, where is your God? Our God is still on the throne. My God is on the throne. I said, my God is on the throne. Discovering, discerning, sinfully induced times of trouble. We're coming to number three. Number three now, defending the soul against trauma in trouble defending the soul against trauma in trouble why do we need to defend the soul against trauma in trouble because if your soul is cast down it will affect your spirit your spirit will be sad you'll be crying you'll be mourning when the heart is not strong and the soul is not strong your hand will be weakened. You won't be able to carry anything. Your leg, your legs will be weakened. You won't be able to walk and walk straight. And your back will bend. You won't be able to stand straight. And your shoulder will be down. And every courage you have had in life, everything will fly away like an eagle. That's the reason why you need to defend your soul, defend your spirit, and defend your heart from the trauma in trouble look at psalm 27 we're looking at verse 1 psalm 27 verse 1 the lord is my light uh-huh the psalmist now is coming you know the, the psalmist sometimes down sometimes up sometimes in the valley sometimes on the mountain top what we need to do is this we need to understand when you are sad, sorrowful, in the valley of despondency. How was your mind thinking then? Turn around. When you were on the mountain top, at the peak, in the stress of the Lord, how was your mind thinking then? Then you understand it is the information you give yourself that makes you sad. In the information you give yourself, that makes you strong. If you give yourself the information, an enemy is there, an enemy is there, an enemy is there. Sometimes they are not really enemies, they are acting drama as if they were enemies. They're just playing, they're joking. 
and they are playing with all those things they're doing and they want to see whether you will join the drama and respond to the drama they're just playing if you understand that it's not everybody that you think it tries to hurt you that is actually hurting you yes maybe they're doing some things but they're doing it like drama but if you bring your heart to the point to understand that when I was on top of the mountain, this is the way I thought, this is the way I acted, that's what happened. Then any time there's a tendency to go down to the valley, your thinking will bring you up. I didn't hear your amen. You'll be alive. And then you hold on to the promises of God. You allow the Spirit of God to remind you that Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Anything, whatever you see, whatever you hear, whatever you feel, whatever noise may be going on in the world, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let each be afraid. And then you come to the top of the mountain. Look at the psalmist now, Psalm 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? That's right. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? That's the right attitude. Compare those enemies with your God. How mighty our God is. How great our God is. How present our God is. How powerful our God is. He is my light. He is my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? And then the Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I fear? And then look at verse 3. It says in verse 3, Though an host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, for in the time of trouble, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. He shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. You'll not be imprisoned. You'll not be in the valley. You'll not be thrown into the dungeon. Now, there were people in the Old Testament that had this victory all the time. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. They could see the fire. They could see the fury of Nebuchadnezzar. They could see the furnace, but all the same, they said, our God who we serve will deliver us. Did he deliver them? He will deliver you. You remember what Jesus said? He said, fear not. For all the ears of your head are numbered. He will protect you. He said, I dare not to spare a soul for a father. And yet not one of them falls to the ground without the knowledge of your heavenly father. And if he protected all those sparrows like that, will he not protect you, O ye of little faith? Remember Daniel, they said, if anyone pray to any other God, all these 30 days, he'll be thrown into the lion's den. And Daniel knew that the law of the Medes and the Persians, that they are unchangeable. Once they have said, this is what they will do, they will do it. He knew that. All the same, he went to his room to pray. And he didn't lock all the doors and all the windows. Like a person who is praying in secret. He opened the doors. You want to see me defy, deny that edict of the impostors? Look through my window and you'll see I remain the same. And he prayed and they said we saw him and we caught him and they reported him. 
the revelation coming will be greater than that report. And so they grabbed him. And the king tried to deliver him. And he could not. Because they reminded him, the law of the Medes and the Persians, they changed not. They cast him into the lion's den. And the lions became his friend. All through the night, he slept there. There was no harm and there was no hurt. There'll be no harm in your life. No hurt in your life. Now, don't go and kneel beside David in Psalm 42. My soul, why art thou cast down? And why is there no courage? You don't remember anything. I am overwhelmed. I'm sick. He don't kneel there. Well, David, come up from there and then come to the right side of victory and come to the right side of the joy of the Lord in your life. And you will praise God even from that time in Jesus' name. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle, shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. Who is the person we're talking about tonight? He'll set you up. I said he'll set you up. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies. No, he will not. He will not deliver you to your enemies because he tells us we being granted freedom. He'll deliver us from our enemies and we shall serve him. Serve the Lord in holiness and righteousness before God all the days of our life. For false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe cruelty. Verse 13, verse 13 said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see. I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And so, there's no reason to be so down that to kill yourself. You will not kill yourself. You will not hurt yourself. You will not knock your head deliberately on something hard to make yourself sick. You are compounding the problem. But you become happy. Hilarious, joyful, upbeat, and you are, by the grace of God, lifted up in Jesus' name. Look at verse 14. Verse 14 tells us, wait on the Lord. When you cannot do any other thing, when you cannot go here or go there, wait on the Lord. When you cannot visit a friend, wait on the Lord. When there's no friend coming to visit you, wait on the Lord. When it appears that you are drowning and you are being overwhelmed, wait on the Lord. Remember even Job in the belly of the whale, when nobody could touch him, nobody could get to him, nobody could comfort him, and nobody could bring him out, he and God alone, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and it shall strengthen thine heart. He shall strengthen thine heart. Which I say on the Lord, everything will be all right. In your life, in your family, in your market, in your profession, in every situation, everything will be all right. And then, look at what you do. Take yourself to the time when the storm is over. The storm is still there. The suffering is still there. The pressure is still there. The happiness appears to be there. Transport your mind, transport your soul, transport your spirit to the time beyond the storm. When there's no more storm, 
how will you sing at that time sing like that now how will you rejoice at that time rejoice now as like that time and you're singing and rejoicing and praising the lord will bring victory into your life in jesus name psalm 57 verse 1 in psalm 57 verse 1 be merciful unto me O god be merciful unto me for my soul trusteth in thee yea in the shadow of thy wings will i make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed the calamities will pass look at verse 7 in verse 7 it tells us my heart is fixed oh god my heart is fixed although the trouble was there although the challenge was there my heart is fixed oh god my heart is fixed i will sing and praise look at psalm 84 reading from verse 2 psalm 84 we're looking at verse 2 my soul longest yea even fainted for thy courts the courts of the lord my heart and my flesh cries out of the living for the living god then he tells us in verse 5 he says blessed is the man whose strength is in thee and whose heart are the ways of them then verse 7 it tells us they go from strength to strength every one of them in zion appears before god then verse 11 in verse 11 it says for the lord god is a son and a shield the lord will give grace and glory no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly from who you got it from you no good thing will he withhold from you in jesus name let's look at point number two now point number two unnecessary depression in times of trouble in times of trouble there are people that think automatically if you're in the time of trouble you must be depressed you must be sorrowful they say persecution will lead to depression and if you are in one you are in the other no you make up your mind you are in christ you should not be in depression you're in the will of the lord you should not be in depression you have done you have said what the lord wanted you to do what the lord wanted you to say whatever may happen as a result of being in the will of god you must never allow yourself to be in depression unnecessary depression in times of trouble look at psalm 56 verse 3 when what time i am afraid i will trust in thee number one you should not be afraid of oh, christ in you christ before you christ around you christ above you Christ supporting you from behind, with Christ interceding for you in heaven, with Christ saying, let's go to the other side, and with his presence abiding with you every time, you should not be afraid. But should in case you're afraid, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee look at verse 4 in verse 4 it tells us in god i will praise his word in god i have put my trust i will not fear 
what flesh can do unto me look at verse 11 there in verse 11 in God have I put my trust I will not be afraid what man can do unto me and then in verse 12 in verse 12 thy vows are upon me O God I will render praises unto thee and then Psalm 118 verse 6 in Psalm 118 verse 6 the Lord is on my side where is the Lord I said where is the Lord look up here let's say you are standing here the devil is standing over there now wherever the Lord stands will be victory and then the Lord looks Satan is there and then you are here where will God stand the Lord is on my side there is an enemy there is angry furious persecuting devilish evil wicked and you are here if the Lord supports him the wicked the evil he will succeed he'll have victory over you but if God says I hate wickedness I hate evil I hate animosity I hate all that 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 evil person has in mind I hate it and then you are standing right you're a child of God you're in fellowship with God where will God stand you will stand on your side and once God is on your side all those people all those persecutors they are nothing in fact they are less than nothing the Lord is on my side I will not fear what can man do unto me look at verse 7 in verse 7 the Lord taketh my part with them that help me therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me verse 8 in verse 8 it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in a man verse 9 it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes look at verse 13 in verse 13 thou hast thrust so at me that I might fall but the Lord held me Verse 14, the Lord is my strength and song, and has become my salvation. 15, the voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. Verse 16, it tells us there the right hand of the Lord is exalted the right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly verse 17 everybody one two three go again finally you will not die but live and declare the works of the Lord now when we look at all those promises depression is unnecessary uncalled for unnecessary depression in times of trouble three things number one empty causes of depression in times of trouble empty no substance 
Number two, effective counsel against depression in times of trouble. Number three, empowered conquerors of depression in times of trouble. Let's look at number one, empty causes of depression in times of trouble. Let's look at Genesis chapter 45, reading from verse 26. It says, and told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive and is governor over all the land of Egypt. And Jacob's heart fainted, for he believed them not. Verse 27, and they told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said unto them. And when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob, their father, revived. Look at verse 28 there. And Israel said, it is enough. Joseph, my son, is yet alive. I will go and see him before I die. Give me a good amen. amen. What made him depressed before was empty. The information they gave him was empty. The coach they showed him, empty. His conclusion, empty. Now he knew the truth. He shall know the truth. And the truth will set you free. When you don't know the truth and the empty lies of deceivers, the empty actions of hidden, cowardly people, they could not do the things directly in front of you. And because they are cowardly, they do it surreptitiously, hidden. And then that empty action makes you depressed. Now, Jacob knew the truth. They showed him the wagons. They gave him the words of Joseph. And the words of Joseph shows he was still alive. And he said, it is enough. Why was I crying? It is enough. Why was I down? It is enough. When did I say I will go to the grave and die and I will be with my son in the grave? It is enough. Enough of depression. Tonight, enough of depression. Enough of sorrow. When you know the truth, you will say, it is enough, no more crying, no more sorrow, no more depression. And you will not make your life to be depressed on empty, empty vanity that doesn't have any water. You will not allow any information that doesn't have any substance in it to make you depressed in Jesus' name. It is enough. Somebody there say, it is enough. All the times of ignorance, all the times of depression unnecessary, all the times of crying unnecessary, it is enough. Joseph, my son, is yet alive. I will go and see him. You will see your beloved. You will see the love of your heart. And all those crying on empty actions, everything will be over in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 21, Genesis chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 15. Empty causes of depression. In times of trouble, Genesis chapter 21, verse 15. And the water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child on the one of the shops. Then in verse 16, 
and she went and sat her down over against him a good way up as it were a bow shot for she said let me not see the death of the child and she sat over against him and lifted up her voice and wept that's Hagar Hagar had been sent away from Abraham's house and then the child her child was with her the bottle of water that was given to her had finished no more water and so the child was panting with serious serious thirst and it was like this child will die and so she put the child away and then she went a great distance from him but we still see him and she waved and say let me not see while the child is struggling with the final pangs and throes of death now all that is unnecessary look at the next verse there in verse 19 verse 19 and god opened her eyes god will open your eyes and she saw a well of water brothers and sisters that well of water had been there the water in the well was also there everything to keep that child from dying of thirst everything available but she did not see and because she did not see she thought the child will die that brought sorrow suffering in the heart it brought the trauma of depression but now god opened her eyes the lord will open your eyes look up here while we're weeping because we're looking here the thing that will give us joy happiness and laughter is over there and but we're not looking there we're only looking here and the things we're looking at they make us sorrowful they make us dejected they make us depressed but the lord will turn your eyes tonight to what is there your well of water is nearby your well of joy is nearby and your well of sustenance is nearby it will yet make you joyful and she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad and all that sinking feeling everything was over your life depression over sorrow over suffering over and all that sinking feeling over in your life in jesus name look at luke chapter 24 luke chapter 24 and we're reading from verse 17 luke chapter 24 verse 17 and he said unto them what manner of communications are these that she have one with another as she walked and as such there were two people going on the way to Emmaus and they were talking together and they were sad look at verse 18 it says in verse 18 and one of them whose name was Cleopas and strange said unto him art thou only a stranger in jerusalem and has not known these things which are come to pass there in these days verse 19 and he said this was jesus and he said unto them what things and they said unto him concerning jesus of nazareth which was a prophet mighty indeed and word before God and all the people and in the next verse there in verse 20 and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death 
and have crucified him. And then in verse 21, but we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. Beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Look at verse 27 now. In verse 27, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them all the scriptures of the things concerning himself. Then verse 31, in verse 31, and their eyes were opened, your eyes will be opened. Christ was walking along with them. They were sad. Christ had risen. They were sad. Christ was so near them, like to no other person on earth, and they were sad. Their eyes were not open. You know, we're sad, we're sorrowful, we're depressed when our eyes are not open. The goodness of God is there. The promises of God are there. The power of God is there. The support of God is there. The comfort of the Holy Ghost is there. But if our eyes are not open, we're sad. And he opened, their eyes were open. And they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. Verse 32. They said in verse 32, and they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures all those causes of sadness sorrow depression they were empty number two now number two effective counsel against depression in times of trouble effective counsel look at john chapter 15 verse 20 john chapter 15 verse 20 remember the word that i said unto you that's all remember the words that i said unto you jesus the same yesterday today and forever remember Remember, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Remember, ask, it shall be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, it shall be opened to you. Remember, remember, shall not God avenge a select that cry unto him day and night? He will surely avenge speedily. He will avenge. Remember that the Holy Ghost will come unto you. It's experient for you to go away. If I go not away, the Holy Spirit will not come but if i go away he will come unto you and he will be your comforter remember remember all the words that are spoken unto you and remember that heaven and earth may pass away but the word of god shall not pass away remember that as the rain comes from heaven and then it makes the earth to be fruitful so shall my word be it shall not go back unto me void it will do what i purpose remember that I believe God, it shall be, even as it was told me from the Lord. Every word of God in your life will be yes and amen in Jesus' name. Look at number three there. Number three, we're looking at uh, number three now. And that is empowered conquerors of depression in times of trouble. Empowered conquerors. Any conqueror here tonight? I said in Concord there tonight, empowered conquerors. The Lord will empower you. Now, when our children, at the age of two, three, five, there were things that made us cry. But now, after 20 years, you're not 23, 27. The things that made you cry at the age of three should not make you cry at the age of 27. The things that made you cry at the age of 17 should not make you cry at the age of 47. 
It should be so far removed from that. And you experience in the watch of God, in the life of righteousness, you experience in the things of the Lord should have emboldened you, empowered you, energized you, and strengthened your backbone. When you are a baby Christian at the age of one, at the age of three, there were things that made you afraid. But now, a real matured believer, at the age of 27, 27 years after conversion, 30 years after conversion, 40 years after conversion, the things that made you cry at the age of three should not make you cry today. We have, we have gone beyond that now. I said we have gone beyond that now. I said, you have gone beyond that now. Empowered conquerors of depression in times of trouble. Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 1. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, we're not walking in the spirit, walking in after the spirit, saved, sanctified, baptized, immersed in the Holy Ghost, empowered by the Holy Ghost. We're not walking in the spirit. Verse 37. In verse 37, nay, in all these things, what things? The things that happened to people in the past, Genesis, Exodus, Joshua, for Samuel, happening to David from Saul, in all these things, the things that happened to Joseph in Potiphar's house, in all these things, the things that happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, the things that happened to people of the past, in all these things, we of this generation, of this new covenant, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Look at First John chapter 4, verse 4. First John chapter 4, verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because, tell me, because, say it aloud, because say to yourself, greater is he that is seen you than he that is in the world. When you are going through some things and you see somebody who is trying to give you depression, sorrow of heart, downcast spirit, a low esteem of yourself. You generally don't think of who they are. Then all of a sudden, you think they are big and you think you are small. You are negligible. You are persecutable. And it appears that the more they, they, they put that pressure on you, you are becoming smaller and smaller and smaller until you appear to be nothing. And then you even now confess, who am I? I am nothing. Stop that. Greater is he that is in you. Greater is he that is in you. Don't act like a worm. Don't act like a non-entity. Don't act like a person who is subjected and suppressed and suffocated. But you understand that as you are in Christ and Christ is in you, you walk in the Spirit and the Spirit abides in you. You have the Word of God and the Word of God abides in you and you are strong and you are stronger than them. You understand? Little children, he have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Another amen there. 
we come to point number three now point number three unstoppable declarations of the time of trouble three things there number one prophetic revelation of the time of trouble number two precious redemption from the time of tribulation number three personal readiness before the time of trouble there's another kind of trouble time of trouble coming and the bible talks about that and the bible says these are the things that will happen and then the time of trouble will come look at number one prophetic revelation of the time of trouble jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7 alas for the day is great so that none is like it it is even the time of jacob's trouble that's the time of tribulation time of trouble it is coming but the church would have been taken away from the uh, from them daniel chapter 12 verse 1 in daniel chapter 12 verse 1 at that time shall michael stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people and there shall be a time of trouble tribulation time there shall be it's inescapable for the people that will be on the earth at that time such as never was since there was a nation even to the same time and at that time thy people shall be delivered everyone that shall be found written in the book prophetic revelation of the time of trouble matthew chapter 24 reading from verse 6 matthew 24 here are the words of jesus that he predicted that he prophesied that he proclaimed concerning the time of trouble time of tribulation and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars see that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet verse 7 in verse 7 for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines pestilences earthquakes in diverse places verse 8 it says all these are the beginning of sorrows verse 21 in verse 21 talking about this time this time of trouble this time of the great tribulation for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be look at verse 22 there it says in verse 22 and except those days shall be shortened there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Luke chapter 21. In Luke chapter 21, verse 25, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring look at verse 26 then it says in verse 26 men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which shall come on the earth and for the powers of heaven shall be shaken then verse 27 it says then shall they see the son of man coming 
in a cloud of power and great glory. 28. And when uh, these things begin to come to pass, then you look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws near. That time is coming. Unstoppable declarations on the time of trouble, on the time of the great tribulation, wars, rumors of wars, calamities, pestilences on the earth. And you see many things happening in our day. It's an announcement that that final time of trouble, the time of the great tribulation is coming. But before that time, there'll be the time of the rapture, which leads us to point number two. Point number two, precious redemption from the time of tribulation, separation, taken away from that time of the great tribulation. As God took away and put in the ship, in the boat, Noah and his family before the flood, so the church will be taken away in the rapture before the time of trouble, before the time of the great tribulation, as Lord and his family were taken away from Sodom and Gomorrah before the fire began to come upon those cities. So the church will be taken away before the time of trouble, the time of the great tribulation. Luke chapter 21 verse 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth near. And then in Isaiah chapter 26 verse 20, Isaiah chapter 26 verse 20, come my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee and hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the time of the indignation be overpassed. Christ will come for the church, the glorious church. The church will be taken away in the rapture. There will be the great tribulation here on earth, time of trouble. It will be for seven years. After seven years of the great tribulation, Christ will come again. He will come with the saints to set up his millennial kingdom here on earth. It tells us in verse 21. It says in verse 21, For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity and the earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. First Thessalonians chapter 5. In First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 3 it says for when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction shall come upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape and then in verse 8 it tells us in verse 8 but let us who have the day let us who are born again let us who have the light of the gospel, let us who are walking in the light, let us who are walking with the light of the knowledge of the Lord, let us who have the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for helmet the hope of salvation. Verse 9, verse 9 says, For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at point number three here. Personal readiness before the time of trouble. Before that great tribulation comes, that trouble that there's no comparison since the world began, nor ever shall be. Before that time comes, the believer should be ready. 
ready for the rapture, ready for the coming of the Lord. Personal readiness before the time of trouble. Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Verse 37. It says, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. In verse 38, it says, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Verse 39, and knew not until the flood came and threw them all away so shall also the coming of the son of man be verse 40 says they shall two be in the field the one shall be taken and the other led verse 41 two women shall be grinding at the meal the one shall be taken and the other led verse 42 now Watch ye therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Verse 44. In verse 44, therefore be ye also ready, saved, ready, righteous, ready. You've cleared your way. Everything you ought to correct, you ought to make right. To have a clear conscience before God and before man, you have done that. You have despised the shame. And you have lived a life of righteousness by His grace. You are not compromising, corrupting yourself, collapsing under pressure. Anywhere you are, and you are waiting, looking for the coming of the Lord. That's how to get ready. You are sanctified. You are part of the glorious church for who the Lord is coming. And the Lord empowers you, energizes you to walk straight and stand straight in the way of the Lord. Therefore, be also ready for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man coming. You'll be ready. I will be ready. And don't let us just say it with word of mouth. Look at your life. Look at your heart. Look at your conscience. And look at the way you are doing the work of God. And do it as if this might be the last thing you are doing before he comes. He'll find you ready. He'll find me ready. Revelation chapter 19. Reading from verse 7. Revelation 19. Reading from verse 7, let us be glad and rejoice. Now, in any time of trouble, let us be glad and rejoice. Any midnight of suffering, persecution, let us be glad and joyful. Any challenge that the devil tries to throw at us through his children, through backsliders, through sinners, through persecutors. Don't cry for persecutors and don't cry for anybody. Let us be glad and rejoice. Our names are written in heaven. Let us be glad and rejoice. The Spirit of God is bearing witness with us that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Let us be glad and rejoice. And knowing we're coming near the coming of the Lord and we shall be part of the people that will make it on the day of rapture. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife is bright. The church has made herself ready. Then in verse 8 it says, And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Let him close you today with his righteousness. And all the time, every time, in the morning, because it may come during the day, in the night before you sleep, because it may come in the night, be closed in the righteousness of the Lord. No sin, no sinful threat, 
no sinful action, no sinful habit, no sinful event, no sin of any shape or any size. And then you go to sleep. If he comes in the night, you'll be ready. If it comes in the day, you'll be ready. For to her was granted that she should be arranged in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And may that righteousness fill you, saturate you, totally surround you. And then the power of the Spirit of God uphold you so that today and tomorrow next week this month next month this year all the years of your life you'll be living a victorious life in jesus name and that wicked one will not touch you where are you rise up and tell the lord First of all, as we are praying, remember, everything we have learned today, remember, we are not supposed to be depressed again. We are not supposed to be so sorrowful again because, you know, something is happening there, something is happening there. Let the Spirit of the Lord energize you tonight. And let the Spirit of the Lord so fill you that none of those things happening will matter to you at all. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. And say, Lord, make me victorious. Make me conqueror. Let the Lord hear your voice. Let them know that you have implicit faith in him. That you know and you believe your savior, your redeemer is more powerful than your persecutor. After being born again, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, you're no more crying. Now like you're crying when you're only born again, three years, two years, stronger. More powerful. You live in your understanding of the promise of God, presence of God, power of God, protection of God, preservation of God. Examine the things that make you feel depressed. Is it self-imposed? Is it simply induced? Are you depressed because you believe a lie? Are you sorrowful because your life is in the hand of deceivers and you believe their lie? You didn't investigate, you didn't find out. Like Jacob, making your own conclusion, Joseph is dead. I shall go to him, sorrowful, go to the grave, 
don't believe a lie. Don't look at what men can do. I will not be afraid what men shall do unto me. Their threats are empty. Their actions are empty. Their stories are empty. Unbelievable. Not believe a lie, it will depress you. Receive effective counsel from the Lord. Remember the words that I said unto you. All the ears of your head are numbered. Nobody can cut short your life by one minute, by one hour, by one day. Live courageously. Live confidently. Let your faith always be handy, always be present, and live by faith, walking in the spirit. Don't walk by the sight of the world. The whole world lies in the wicked one. And remember that it didn't escape the time of trouble coming. The time of tribulation. The time of Jacob's trouble. The time of great suffering and trauma, tribulation. Like it has never been in the world. Get ready and be protected before that day comes. Don't be a backslider. Don't let the Lord come and meet you in the stage of backsliding. Ready? You are keeping your salvation. Ready, you are righteous. Ready, you are uncompromising. Ready, you are unconquerable. Ready, you are occupied in the work he has given us to do before he comes. Put on the robe of righteousness permanently. In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord has answered your prayer. What you were before you will not be again. Yeah. Sorrowful before, no more. Yeah. Traumatized before, no more. Yeah. Depressed before, no more. Yeah. New strength, yeah. new power, yeah. new courage, yeah. new boldness, yeah. new protection, yeah. healing, yeah. deliverance, dominion, strength, prosperity, joy of the Lord in your life. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for all your servants, all your children here tonight.
We're praying, oh Lord, all the tears of the, of the past, wipe them away in Jesus' name. The show of feebleness, of fainting, of fearfulness in the past, take it away in Jesus' name. The lack of power, the lack of strength in the past, enough is enough. Let your power come. Let your strength come. Let your mind come. That the things that frightened us before, intimidated us before, will no more frighten, intimidate anymore in Jesus' name. Feel everyone with your power, with your strength a new anointing and new courage in every life in Jesus name make this brother make this sister more than a conqueror more than a conqueror in their spirit in their mind in their soul in their inner man in their thinking everyone more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. Give everyone the consciousness that greater is he that is in us than anyone, everyone in the world in Jesus' name. And make us live moment by moment, hour by hour, day by day, all the rest of our life, in this courage and confidence in the Lord, in Jesus' name. No sickness will overcome your people. No tyrant will overcome your people. No depression will overcome your people. The world, the devil, and the evil in it will be under our feet in Jesus' name. Confirm your word of power, your word of promise, upon every life Amen. it is done Amen. we are blessed Amen. we're empowered Amen. we're energized Amen. we will never be the same again Amen. I I I will never be the same again confirm it Lord in every life in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.